Today in your 2013 Ford Escape, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install eTrailer's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It's a Class 3 2-inch by 2-inch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your towing needs, whether you're wanting to put a bike rack in there and load it up with some bikes to hit the trail, or if you're wanting to bring maybe a pop-up camper or a boat with you for the weekend. This hitch uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer, and you can get locking ones to protect your investments. On bottom we've got hoop style safety chain loops with a very large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. And this hitch offers a 350 pound tongue weight, and that's the force going down on top of the receiver, and that's going to be more than enough for a four bike platform rack loaded up with four bikes. It's not going to be enough for the largest cargo carrier here, but it, you can still put a cargo carrier in it and get some of that gear in your vehicle out here on the back. It also offers a 3,500 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. And with that, again, you can pull a pop-up or a boat with it. You should have no problem with that. It is rated for use with the weight distribution system. When using one, that does increase its capacities. That increases our tongue weight to 500 pounds and our gross towing capacity to 5,000 pounds. We've got a lot of different types of weight distribution systems here at eTrailer, so you can check those out to see which one's gonna be the best for your particular vehicle and trailer combination. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the ground to the top and side edge of our receiver tube, it measures about 14 and a quarter inch. That's important when determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raise shank on any of your accessories. And from the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it measures about four and a half inches. That's important when determining if any of your accessories are gonna contact the bumper when inserted, and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation by lowering down our exhaust. On each side, you're gonna have an exhaust hanger that's bolted into the frame, and there'll be two bolts that's holding it in. We're gonna remove these on each side using a 13 millimeter socket and lower our exhaust down. The exhaust is gonna rest on your rear suspension here, so it will support itself, but I do recommend just kinda keeping your arm under to support it and lower it down softly. On the driver's side, if we follow our heat shield back, we're going to have one nut on a stud. We're going to remove that because we do need to make some modifications to the heat shield, trim it, and get it out of our way. Our hitch is going to rest along the frame. We don't want the heat shield to be between the hitch and the frame, so we're going to trim this section off over here, and we're going to do the same thing over on the other side. The other side is a little bit longer, so you don't need to trim it all the way straight back, but you can if you want to. So we're just bending it down, and we're just gonna trim this section off now. We're just using a pair of snips to trim it out. After you've trimmed the heat shield on the driver's side, if you didn't trim all the way back, you can reinstall that nut there. We cut back pretty much just about right before there, so that way it's not gonna pinch between our hitch and we can still retain that fastener. The elongated opening here where we had trimmed out where our heat shield was is gonna be our access hole to feed our hardware in. We'll need to enlarge the hole here until we can get our carriage bolt fed in. Here's our carriage bolt. You can see it's pretty close. It almost slides in right now, but we are gonna have to just make a little groove in it. So we're just gonna use our file. You can use a grinding tool, whatever you have available to enlarge this hole. Now that our hardware fits, you can see here that it does pass up in there. We can feed our hardware into place. We're gonna be using, this is our access hole. We're gonna come out this hole and there's also a hole here on the side. We're gonna start by feeding our hardware through the side hole first and then the one on the bottom here. We have our fish wire here. Take the coiled end, poke it into the side hole. We're gonna bring that fish wire down until it comes out the excess hole here that we had enlarged. So you just gotta feed it until it gets into place. Can be a little tricky sometimes. There we go. 
Now that we've got that guy fed through, we can take our spacer, that's gonna slide on first, and then we'll take a carriage bolt and thread that onto the coiled end. Once we've got it threaded on there, we can then take our hardware and we're gonna push it inside the frame. This is usually easier done if it's done a piece at a time. And with the carriage bolts, a lot of times with these, I find them easier to put in kind of backwards. She kind of can like tilt it to rotate it into position and then push it up in there. And we'll pull it till it comes back through and then we're gonna push it back in till it drops right in there and then just leave our fish wire hanging there. We'll repeat the same procedure to get a bolt fed through here and then I'll show you the reverse fish wire technique for the last one. And for our, our reverse fish wire technique here at the end, we're gonna take our spacer, put it over the coiled end of a fish wire. We're then gonna thread our carriage bolt onto it. And then after you've got your carriage bolt threaded on there, we're just one at a time gonna feed our pieces of hardware into the frame. and then just pull it right back down. Now that we've got all of our bolts fed in on this side, we're gonna perform the same procedures over on the other side to get the hardware fed in the same locations. Now with the next set of hands, we'll raise our hitch into position. We need to raise it up over our exhaust. And then we'll feed our fish wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch. You'll wanna use the rearmost hole and then the second from the front of the vehicle hole. Once you've got them all fed through, if you pull the side carriage bolt through, that'll hold the hitch up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware. You can go ahead and remove your fish wires and then install a flange nut onto each one. I've got all our carriage bolts loosely installed. We can put our muffler back into position. You're gonna use the newer bolts that come in your kit, the hex heads. We're gonna place a flat washer on it. And then these are just gonna reinstall in the same location that we had removed it from. We just got longer bolts now to accommodate the hitch being in there as well. And we left the carriage bolts loose because sometimes you do need to make subtle adjustments in order to line the hardware back up. We can now go back and tighten down our hardware. We're gonna use an 11 16 socket for our larger bolts. And a half inch for our smaller hardware. We can then go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. And that completes our installation of eTrailer's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2013 Ford Escape.